Okay, uh, today we're going to talk about medical decision making as part of our EPT documentation series. This is probably going to be the longest module in the series because there's a lot to talk about. It's kind of difficult to break up into pieces. So put your big boy pants on and uh, <laughs> strap in. It's, it's not, gonna be a, it's gonna not be a complicated. Good one. It is good. It's yep. good. So, and once again, you know, we put this together primarily for new hires uh, as sort of an orientation and introduction into how we like you know, how we like folks to document at EPT, but I think this will also be a good refresher uh, for a lot of folks uh, that have worked with us uh, over the years. So uh, looking forward to it, and um, I think Tom and I both agree that medical decision-making is probably the most important uh, section of There's the There's no question about it. But before we get into that, we're going to review. Uh, last time we went through the elements or the important elements of the physical exam. Very quickly, we talked about that simple versus complex breakpoint. Uh, remember, you know, if you have somebody with a simple problem and, you know, an ankle sprain, you document 12 or 13 areas in the physical exam, it's not going to result in a higher Right, cut. you're wasting your time. Wasting so your sim time. simple complaints get focused exams. Any complex complaint gets a full exam. Exactly. Remember, be careful with your templates. Uh, I see this all the time when I'm reviewing charts for QA or for complaints. And, uh, you know, someone will come in with a clearly uh, templated physical exam that actually contradicts what they've documented in other areas of the right. chart. So be very careful. It'll say those. regular rate and rhythm and the patient's got a heart rate of 130, 130. and AFib. Exactly. So keep your templates very basically and then document up. And make sure that you, when you review the chart, you look for inconsistencies. Sure. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about medical decision making. So this is the most important part of the chart because this is where the story is told about what really happened to the patient while they're in the ER. And it, it uh, depending on what you have in here, makes a big difference with billing. But it's also, uh, from a medical standpoint, you know, if I look at a chart, the first thing I look at is a diagnosis. The next thing I look at is what happened while the patient right. was in the emergency department right. to kind of figure out what's going on. So when we talk about the section of the chart that's medical decision making, we're talking about your initial assessment. Well, we're talking about your differential, and if you've seen our notes, you know that we actually put those right at the top of the chart just below the diagnosis. Right. Because, again, that's where everybody looks when they're reviewing a chart. Uh, it's also going to include the results and the interpretation of results. It's going to uh, include what happened uh, or your ED course. Uh, we want to make special note that when you document your ED course, you want to include response to treatment. Uh, it's going to include your disposition, the condition on disposition, and uh, diagnosis. Right. It is the most important part of the chart. Right. Uh, because we think it's the most important part of the chart, we want you to spend uh, most of your time here. Exactly. Yeah. So keep rolling. So, and apparently I misspelled disposition, so. On the initial chart, but apologies. we're going to fix that slide. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if we can, but we'll okay. figure out something. All right. <laughs> so um, it can be a difficult area to template. It's fairly, you know, a lot of the stuff we talk about is fairly nebulous. I mean, it's not like, you know, physical exam where, you know. We don't want you to use a template here, right. actually. We want you, to, this should be free texting. Now, some people will differ, will uh, template the differential diagnosis. And that can be, I think, good and bad. Um, I have several differential templates that I use, but I use them more to remind myself to consider diagnoses right. in certain situations. I used to use more templates for differential diagnosis, but it becomes a problem because you've got lower abdominal pain in a male, lower abdominal pain in a female. They're completely right. different. Lower, right. abdominal pain in a, lower abdominal pain in an old person. What you don't want to do is have things in your differential diagnosis that are clearly impossible. Right. So here's a good example of this. Um, this is a canned differential that I found when I uh, was reviewing a chart uh, some, some weeks back. Um, if you look at the differential, you can see that they include cholecystitis, but then when I went down to their past surgical history, they actually had a history of a cholecystectomy. So if you've had your gallbladder out, you can't have cholecystitis. Right, and if you're a male, you can't have an ectopic pregnancy or PID. Exactly. So be very, very careful with those, uh, with those templates. Um, so difficult area to template, make sure that um, when you do a differential diagnosis template, you don't include things that are impossible. Uh, one of the other things that we really like to see in the medical decision-making section is timed progress notes. Um, not only is that good from a documentation and a billing and coding standpoint, but it's also very good from a QA and from a medical legal standpoint. No question. When did you see a positive result? When did you order the next test? When did you talk to your consultants? When was the decision to admit made? Yeah. 
um, it makes can make a big difference, especially when things go bad. When things right. are moving along swimmingly, it's generally not a big deal. But that's not when the chart becomes right. really important. And sometimes you don't know when things are going to turn out. No question about so. it. Uh, also, very, very important to document your uh, decision-making process. So um, this is, I think, goes to the communication standpoint and also goes to the uh, you know, QA review. Uh, if you document why you're thinking what you're thinking, it, it becomes easier, I think, to defend your actions. Yeah, I mean, for on. example, if you've got a patient that comes in with chest pain and shortness of breath, but you've already, you know, you've, you've done the PERC, like they're PERC negative, they've got a well score of zero, if you just put that in there, then everybody understands why you didn't order a D-dimer. Right. And, and later it, when the patient comes back dead from a PE, well, you can go back to your it, chart and say, hey, I, I, I thought about it and right. the patient did not it, meet it, any it, kind of criteria. Exactly, yeah. So I mean, other, they might not have come back dead with a PE. I'm well, just saying. Hopefully, hopefully they didn't. If something bad <laughs> happens. Yeah. At least they know what you were thinking. Or if somebody why. just has a question. I mean, we I certainly get patient complaints where nothing bad happened, but... The patient is complaining because they didn't get something that they perceived right. that they needed. So I just saw the, a chart the other day. Patient's mom was complaining six months after the fact, mind you, that her daughter didn't get tested for strep throat when she came into the emergency department. Right. Well, the reason she didn't get tested for strep throat was she didn't have a fever, she was coughing, she had a runny nose, and she had a positive flu swab. Right. And if you document that in your medical decision making, then I can go back to the, to the mom and say, you're a loon get out of here <laughs> exactly or you might not you'd probably say it in a much more politically responsible way no i didn't but okay. anyway um so other things to consider when you're documenting your medical decision making assess the patient's risk this is very important i think for certainly for our cardiac patients um, and we like to, to have that, uh, you know, outlined right up front. Um, we do ask people, or, or we think it's good if you outline your plan and say, okay, I think the patient's risk is this, and this is what I'm going to do to evaluate it. Exactly. And, you, you know, you don't have to restate the whole chart. You know, if you've Definitely. got all the risk factors written down in the HPI, you can just put multiple cardiac risk factors. Yes, exactly. We'll admit to ED ops for further evaluation of chest pain. And that's actually something we're going to cover in a later uh, installment about right. the art of the chart and how to make your charts look and flow, you know, nice, nicely. So uh, we do, it, it does help when you identify decision points. It helps the coders, but it also helps when the charts, if the charts need to be reviewed later on. Um, obviously, we want to know what the report, what the results are, and, and a lot of that flows automatically into your chart. Yeah, so your results are in there pretty right. much. I, there's very little that you have to cut and paste anymore. We right. used to have to do X-ray reports, but it can be something simple as D dimer positive, CTA ordered. Exactly. You know, exactly. then you you know, it just you don't have to regurgitate everything yeah. that's in there. Or you know, X-ray shows concerning mass will get CT chest. Yeah. Now, sometimes what will happen is, you know, you'll order a test result that you know isn't going to come back. You know, somebody comes in, they had a tick bite, and now they've got a rash and they've got a fever, and you order a Lyme titer, and they have a family doc who's going to follow it up. That's fine. Just document that that's the case. Right. Or, like, for example, I had a patient I admitted last night with pancreatitis. Uh, I ordered the CT scan, but I got the patient admitted. You know, doctor, the admitting doctor is going to follow up on the CT result. Yep. Uh, we do like when you have an x-ray report back to uh, identify who interpreted that. That's probably less important now that we're, we're getting more contemporaneous reads. But in the past, you get a plain film back, you would interpret it as negative. Uh, it was important to identify that you're the one who interpreted it rather than the uh, radiologist. Um, when you review old records, I think it's very important to include the key points you took away from the old records. So echo results, prior cath results, right. uh, recent admits and what was done, uh, things like that. Um, trends and test results. So if somebody comes back and they've got a creatinine of 2 and their previous creatinine was 1, I think it's important to note that. Right. On the other hand, if they always have a creatinine of 2, you, know, you want to note that so that people understand that you're not too worried about that. Exactly. Uh, rechecks, I think, are very important. You should always be rechecking your patients. Um, you know, they, they certainly appreciate it, and I think it also helps you take better care of them. A lot of us do this automatically, but don't document it. And so, um, you know, you want to include that. And, and typing in dot now to time your recheck, I think, is a nice uh, little tip that we all use. Absolutely. And if you give medications, you know, document response to treatment. If someone's got bad pain and you give them pain medicine, document that they felt better. Or it's, that they didn't and you gave them something right. else. Right. Because, what, you know, again, that goes to complaints like the doctor never treated my pain. It's like, no, it's well documented. You got pain medicine and he felt better or you know we will see it all the time someone has 
bad high blood pressure, they get a medication to treat it, or they've got a fib and they're given, you know, uh, cardizem drip. Well, did they convert or not convert? Just right. you know, put that information yeah. in the chart. Absolutely, I think it's very important to uh, document your consultations, and we're going to talk a little bit uh, more about that here in a second. And then obviously procedure notes, and um, we have a uh, tab in Epic that allows you to to quickly point and click document. Uh, multiple procedures, uh, especially some of the more common ones we do. And then we do still have some procedures that need a .xp note. Right, so if you so. can't find the procedure on the procedure tab, d type in .xp and whatever the procedure is and you'll likely find it there. And if you can't find it there, just document what you did. Right. You know, patient had a wound, this is what I did to it. You know, don't get all caught up. I've got to have the official procedure note. Just document what right. you did to the patient. Right. But uh, we all Tell the story. Yeah. And, and, but we'd always prefer to use the procedure tab no over the .xp. Because so. the procedure tab automatically documents that as a procedure. You can go back and search them. If you free text anything in the chart, you can't search it. But, you know, you could go back and say, how many intubations have I done? Well, if they've all right. been done on the procedure uh, note tab, that's easy information to yep. get bad and at. And that, that is important, I think, for some credentialing. No question. Probably will become more important uh, down the road. Uh, so I, we talked about documenting consultations. I think it's very important to always document the time that you talk to the consultant. Um, if you talk to them in person or on the phone, did they actually see the patient? So you know, frequently some of our you know some of our more aggressive consultants will actually come down to the to the emergency department and see the patient. I think it's important to document that. What did you talk about? when you talked about or when you consulted the, the specialist. Uh, and so this is real big when we have, um, you know, we run in sometimes to a he said, she said situation. Right, so especially you, if, you have a, if you have a concern, something that's concerning you. For example, you see a patient, you've got a concerning looking EKG, you know, talk to the cardiologist, Dr. So-and-so, he looked at the EKG, uh, and then this is the decision we came to. Right. We had actually had a case that we won, a malpractice case, on an abnormal lab value right. where it was very clear in the ED record that the ED physician discussed the abnormal lab value with the consultant. They came up with a plan, mm -hmm. and it was just very clear cut. So right. later when there was a bad outcome, uh, there was, was no question that the ED physician had deferred to the specialist. Right. And... Yeah. Yeah, and, off the hook. and so as Tom mentioned, always talk about document what the result of your con, you know, your consultation I didn't mean to was. Preempt your no, no, that's perfect. I, I, that that flowed very well. I think. Okay, good. So, <laughs> uh, and then disposition, um, you know, it's more of a medical legal tip than a documentation tip. But if you're not sure about the patient, say it's, you know, somebody who probably doesn't need to be admitted, but maybe they're a little on the sicker side, just bring them back to the emergency department. I think a lot of us that have worked here over the years have kind of gotten in the habit of doing this. And I think this is going to become more prevalent um, as, as healthcare evolves. Right. Or um, observe them. That's or, another, yeah, that's another possibility. Them. Remember, again, a little medical legal tip. Always make sure that you check the discharge vital signs and the nurse's notes. Um, oftentimes when I'm QAing a chart, uh, if it's a bounce back or if it's a bad outcome, more often than not, there'll be something in the nurse's assessment or their discharge vital signs that was a little bit of a clue that they weren't uh, weren't quite ready to go home. And so I'd be very careful with those. And unfortunately, sometimes the nurses don't document things until after the patient, you know, maybe several hours after the patient's already left. And so I find in those cases, uh, it's important to actually talk to the nurse that's going to discharge Yeah, I usually patient. try to just touch base with the nurse right. when they're going home. Hey, bed 15's going home. And then they know right. that if walk there's, oh, well, hey, by the way, they're still having pain or yeah, the family has a question the, or whatever the pain's it is. bad or if they can't walk or if their heart rate's tacky or they got a fever, you know, grab me and let me know before you let them right. go. Uh, discharge instructions, you know, I, I, I tend not to put a whole lot of these in my medical decision making section, but if it's an important one like come back in 48 hours for a recheck or, uh, you know, make sure you call the cardiologist for a stress test then I try to put that in. Well, the, your discharge the instructions are part of the record. So they can you can always go back and see what you told the patient. And right. you don't necessarily need to put it in your chart unless it's something you want someone that's reading the chart to know that you that, said. Yeah, that, that's, you said that much better than I did. That's that's kind of what I do. So the really important ones that I want people to know I told the patient I, I actually put in the yeah. chart. Yeah, you know, discuss the fracture with the orthopedist. Uh, he will see the patient. You know, patient instructed to call them tomorrow for the appointment, right. whatever it is. Right. 
Um, and then last but not least, this is uh, one that I've learned the hard way over my years with EPT is... And it's uh, not and a sexist comment. It's no, just the, it's just reality. Just the reality. It's the way it is. Um, in every patient that comes in, even the ones that come in by themselves, there's usually a decision-making female in their family unit. And you need to identify that one, that person, and make sure that they're on board with everything that you did and what your plan is for treatment. And if you've got them on board, then you're golden. If you don't have them on board, then there's going to be problems. Right. Uh, so make sure you talk to them. This is especially important when someone is trying to sign out. Usually a male is trying to sign out AMA. Um, if that happens, then I would encourage you, and we'll talk about this later too, but I would encourage you, even if that decision-making female isn't in the room, yeah. get them on the phone or get them out of the waiting room. Hey, is your family here? Where's your wife? Exactly. Maybe we should talk to her. Or your sister or your daughter. Exactly, mother, whoever it is. Whoever it is. So make sure that you talk to them. And then that's something else that I oftentimes will document, like spoke to mom, spoke to daughter, and they're on board. So um, financial implications. Just don't even look at this. No, stop. We... You can look at it. I wanted to go through it. It's very All right, we'll just, we'll just skip that. I'm just going to, well, look, the whole meaning of that slide is that if, if you have a, a questionable chart, you know, we always say an ankle sprain can only be coded up to a certain level. Right. But if it turns out it's a bad ankle sprain and then they have swelling and they're diabetic and they have this and they have that, right. all that stuff, you know, keeps building up in the chart and Makes eventually you get complex. to some serious medical decision making and right. that's ankle sprain is probably a bad idea I mean a bad example but the point is is that you have to you know what the coders look at they look at the required elements for history and physical and then the next thing they look at is the medical decision making right. so if it's a complex problem that needed a lot of intervention and consultation and admission right that's a complex patient it is the most subjective area of the the, the chart and we've talked a lot about simple versus complex patient encounter um, when you're talking about what's a what does the medical decision making look like for a complex patient encounter? Well, there's going to be uh, multiple differential diagnoses. There's going to be a fair amount of uh, data that you've reviewed. Um, patient is going to have some moderate risk uh, exactly. to their complaint. Um, you know, the the sicker patients like your level fives, it's going to be you know probably four or five different in your differential uh, extensive data. You know, your but EKG, it doesn't you know it doesn't have to be. If someone comes in with an obvious stroke, mm-hmm. it's either going to be a wet stroke or a dry stroke. But the medical decision making or hypoglycemia, well, it could be. or a UTI, it's right, sepsis. or Todd's paralysis. Or, so you right, can see how, but there might be. But the point is, is that you know, in someone that's got, or if they've come in with a STEMI, okay, sure. which is obvious on the EKG. Yep. It's really about what you did about this life-threatening yeah. condition. Well, and that's usually where the extensive risk kind right. of falls in. And, and generally, even a STEMI, there's going to be a fair amount of data that you're going to be reviewing. No question about it. During the, the you know, encounter. are they responding to treatment? Right. Are they still having pain? What's their heart rate doing? Right. Did their blood pressure, etc. And, and then, last but not least, I'll say this again: just dot now everything yeah. that you can in the uh, the medical decision making. That really, like I said, speaking from the director standpoint, that makes it a lot easier when I review the charts because there was a, a problem or, or concern. So I think that's pretty much everything for uh, medical decision making. We it went is. over so many things that I'm going to skip the, the general review <laughs> right. at this point. Um, we're going to talk next time about the uh, importance of, the, of your, uh, your uh, discharge diagnosis. Um, it's going to be a much shorter, uh, much shorter uh, episode. And um, I mean, I guess that my, what I would say is for medical decision making, your, the, the chart tells a story. Tell the story. The medical decision making tells the story of what happened mm-hmm. in the emergency department, what you were thinking, when you thought it, and what you did about it. Yeah. And so it doesn't have to be a lot of words, but a dot now. And again, I go to back to this because it's an easy one. Dot now, D dimer positive, CTA ordered. Anybody right. that reads that chart knows exactly what you were thinking. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? well, very well said. And then probably before that, you documented why you ordered the D-dimer. Hopefully. Because their well score was three and they were perk positive. Or and, they, you know, just had you know. knee surgery a week ago exactly. or whatever. So, all right. Well, uh, we will uh, be back next time talking about diagnosis. And if you guys have questions or comments, please uh, shoot a line or, or give a call to myself or Tom. All right. Till next time. <laughs>